Easter egg thing came from? I don't know. Is that I the, have. Is that I an have, American thing, or is that I have. I have zero. I've clue. never looked I'm not into really it. Sure if it's I've American never looked thing into or, it. I don't or, know if it was like created by the candy industry, or if it was like probably something that was like a tradition <laughs> that was before or something. Yeah, I no, know. I have. I have zero clue. Uh, is well, it, the thing is that <laughs> not until you all were, you know, I guess in the eighties or nineties. Did you guys not do Easter egg hunts when you guys were younger? No. <laughs> And what they do, oh. they would actually no? boil yeah. the eggs. Well, no, I know. Well, somebody, I don't know. Dad had a better childhood than you did. No. <laughs> because they would boil real eggs and color them. So okay, you yeah, know, now that, that I remember. Was, that yeah, was. Boil eggs, yeah. but they would do cascarones, then they would do yeah. the uh, plastic eggs. I don't think. Well, but no, I don't plastic think. Plastic eggs. Yeah. Really? I don't. Yeah, well, nah. I never had nah, the plastic eggs. No, for me, eggs yeah, for me, it was. Only thing that I remember about eggs was when I was growing up was just dying. Them. My mother would boil the eggs and we would die them. Yeah, and that would be that it. Some of them. Yeah. That would be it. I didn't. Yeah, ca- the, ca- the whole cascarones thing here. Yeah, when okay. I first got here, it was something that was crazy yeah, that's for the me. Thing, it's an American culture thing that so, comes from Mexico. Yeah, the cascarones. Like yeah, the fiesta and all that. Yeah, Cause they, that's what they do in fiesta. Yeah. No, uh, now the I cascarones know, I, I do recall, right. and everyone took care. Mark a little more yeah, I remember those because you, I mean, you used the egg, you made sure, and, and you cleaned them out and all that. And uh, I did them for a couple of years until I, you know, what? yeah, it's like we were the only ones making them. The kids were all excited, <laughs> and then they'd go ahead and they were tired. And I made a lot of them because I saved through the the whole year. Yeah. And then it was just like throwing I bet them the, at I bet the, the pro- wall. I bet the process to that is like, Probably well, freaking. You gotta, you gotta break the egg right. So right. You crack it on the. Oh, yeah. No, you can't just be like, caca. <laughs> no, you gotta yeah. like tap it on the top. Tink, 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 tink. Well, and then. I, yeah. What? And they kept on. So I'm that's like, for the castorones. So that they can eggs. save the egg shell. Oh, oh, to yeah. save, yes. Yes, yeah. to yeah, save you the egg. Break it around. Yeah. yeah. And now I think I, I don't think I remember plastic eggs. No. It was not, just the boiled yeah. eggs and the cascarones. Yeah. So and candy. I'm, I'm reading. Yeah. I'm reading. And this is just a quick Google search, so I can't trust it completely. But it says it actually comes from Germany, and some suggest the origins date back to late 16th century when the Protestant reformer Martin Luther organized egg hunts for his congregation. But they had to have used real Martin eggs. Luther, really? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised on that. Mm. Huh. Me too. I don't know. Mm. Maybe, but maybe it was just something. When he when he decided to sign for the Catholic Church, I, 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 we're doing Easter eggs. I, I guess <laughs> he had to have some kind of preaching behind it. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I don't know. But uh, searching, you know. But yeah, no. I said first when I first got here though, when my first, I remember specifically my first uh, Resurrection Sunday here, and I went to my uh, my wife's parents' house. And this is when the, uh, their their my nieces and nephew they were little. Mm-hmm. And even uh, I think Avilia had kids; they were little. Yeah. And man, like they just wanted just put crap down my head, and I was like, "What?" I didn't know what that was. I was kind of like, <laughs> "Why are they hitting me? Attacking like, me?" What the heck? <laughs> like then, then my wife explained, like, "Yeah, that's what they do." Then I was just wondering, like, you know, what's the what's the real heritage behind it, though? Behind Cascarones. Yeah, what is I mean, the real? You know what I mean? Like, what's the real reason why? I remember because before it's they sell, they sold. You know what I mean? I'm just. We uh, had to get color paper. Oh, you reading on it? And and the, cutting them. Oh, okay. That's what it was just Mexicans needed yeah. to put confetti in something and throw them at people. No. Okay, let me. I'm gonna date right. myself. <laughs> no, we would have to literally. I remember my sisters <laughs> either oh, tissue wow. paper Tony. or and cutting them. Having to cut them to what? Be, uh, this almost Make the confetti. Yeah, yeah. Well, and now the industry here. Ah, no, that's way too much. Yeah, well, I remember like you, the, had to you cut make the holes. Yeah, hole oh, punchers. and yeah. then yeah. hole punchers. Yeah, yeah and then they that. discovered oh, hole punchers. Yeah, we can do that. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm dating myself back in the seventies. Glue it around it. That that was the worst part is that you had to glue it around it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that too. We would. My, yeah. my, wife, my wife also told me horror stories too, when like her brother they put like salt and pepper ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh like yeah, kind of crazy Those crap in there. Teenagers. Oh, God, just so you didn't even oh, hear all that. Young, young kids. <laughs> that. Raw egg. Sorry, babe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Raw no. Egg. Uh, yeah. 
No, the, supposedly it, the Easter egg hunt. Supposedly again, Wikipedia. Martin Luther. Mar- Martin Luther. Martin Luther. Okay. Supposedly it's supposed to be a Christian symbol of the resurrection of Christ, symbolizing the tomb from which Christ rose. Uh. The thought was that you hide the egg and you go looking for the empty tomb. Oh. oh. See, I told you they he I had like, to tie right. it. Okay. Yeah. I guess. But yeah. You found food. Yeah. The idea was <laughs> the, egg, the egg was the empty tomb. So oh, okay. I have to really look that up. I've never thought huh. about, you know. I thought Bugs Bunny always brought them. You know. <laughs> well, apparently Martin Luther didn't. Apparently the men of the congregation would hide it and the women and children would go looking for it. Oh, wow. So, oh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I know that they would do like, Again, like I said, I, I remember we would make them when we were younger, both the hard boil <laughs> and the cascarones. Yeah. And you would have that stupid little, like, okay. close, like clothes hanger thing, and you, like, dip it into the dye. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It, oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah it, it was a they, wire. It wasn't a yeah. clothes hanger. No, it was a wire, but it was a wire that looked like a clothes hanger. Oh, yeah. that's what it reminded <laughs> but it, but you of? Yeah, that's your description. Uh, <laughs> whoa. The feeling yeah. of it felt like a clothes hanger feeling. Yeah. Like a yeah. Clothes hanger. It, it, you put it, it in and brought it out. You brought it out, and then most of the time you just ended up using your hand. because Then you turn it around so it could but dry. You, that was the do, most, uh, you, you would have to, have to do, do that like a day or two before to go ahead and, and color you, and them. And you had a but the cascarone, like in So Mexico, they would dry out. In Mexico yeah. and all the way here, it's just a fiesta thing to enjoy, you know. Mm. They enjoy the... the yeah. Uh, Again, it was developed from a port... From a poor, you know, that they, you know, and they found things. It's like okay. the uh, bunuelos. I always tell them, you roll them out like a tortilla and you fry it and then you add some sh- brown sugar and cinnamon and. There you go. And that's bunuelos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I know that there's a different recipe for the bunuelos, but there still. Is. I it, no, it's practically. I thought it was just a uh, raw flour tortilla that they fried and threw sugar. Yeah. Sugar well, yeah, it. that's more or less. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's so, what it is. And now you have to pay a dollar something for each one. <laughs> but you had to make the uh, make it thinner. Yeah. So, I think you know, looking back, I realize what what you know, the generations before me did to go ahead and and celebrate. In a poor fashion, what they had. No, that, but but that's what I mean. I think like the Easter egg hunts and stuff like that, like churches that do them and stuff. I think it's a good thing. It's like just kids running around doing stuff. Oh, I yeah. mean, I remember doing it here at the church when I was younger. Just yeah, the Easter egg hunts they would have and stuff like that. Typically, they would hide like I don't know at the time I thought it was a lot of money. I guess it was five dollars. Oh, the golden egg. Yeah, there was only oh, like yeah. one or two golden eggs they would hide somewhere. Yeah. And uh, you would have that. You do the Easter egg hunt, and well, we would do. I that don't know, man. We would do it at home too, like what the we food do stamps? now. I don't, I, you know what? I, don't, I don't remember doing it at home. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't. I always remember doing it at the church. I don't remember doing it at home. Yeah, we did. Maybe and that's we when we put younger, in. And that's why I don't remember. But I do remember the first cause, cause I, was, well, <laughs> I, I guess maybe because by the time I could remember stuff, which is why my theory of kids don't remember anything before five comes from. Mm-hmm. I always remember it was at the church, and then we were pretty much here all day because it goes back to my whole thing with oh, you guys, yeah. you guys were doing the fellowships yeah. then, and people were just hanging yeah. out with each other because you're afraid every friend was going to pull you into the world. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just going down my soapbox on it, but anyways, <laughs> but yeah, anyways yeah. what I'm saying is, it was yeah. it, we were well, I'm just joking, all right? Uh, yeah, uh, but no, but what what I'm saying is, and there was a little bit of. But it was no fear. Okay. It was just but what, what, what I, the, point, the, the point the point that I was trying to make <laughs> before you went devered yes. took us all down that road. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's my fault. Um, the point I was trying to make was that's why I remember we were here all day. It was yeah. like you know you had the Easter egg hunt and then it was like barbecue, barbecuing and stuff like that. And everyone people were here and their side dishes. By the time you remember, I, mean, I don't know. It may, but I, I couldn't. I, maybe we were still even having two services at that time. I don't remember. Or mm. did you just combine it to one service on the Sunday, on Easter? Gosh, I don't recall. I think I don't we remember. did. Before we got yeah. out of the outreach, we had to get together with the outreach. Oh, I see. I don't even Sunday remember. Sunday mornings. I, oh, I don't even remember but that. Yeah, you were small because oh. that's when we lived in Morales Street. Oh, okay. But that, that had to be. Because then two French. 
No, because that, then after that, uh, yeah, we had two services and we would just combine them. Okay, that's what I figured yeah. because I just remember there really only being one <laughs> service and and there was the Easter egg hunt and stuff like that, and then we'd have the barbecue yeah. and things like mm. that. So yeah, um, which I never understood. Like you guys would try to dress us up nicer on those days, but you knew we we're gonna be running in grass. Oh, and man. Stuff. Don't even get no, me started I, I kind of stopped that because of that. <laughs> no, you would have night Easter. Like, like there's Easter. a picture I have of you and Sammy, and those are your Easter outfits, and they're short shorts and a t-shirt, you know, but colorful Easter like, so that you all could go ahead and run around and and get dirty. <laughs> no logic, jumped in and yeah. like no, and if anything, you know, unless you were gonna sing up here or. Or do something. Which I always found interesting. That was the other thing. <laughs> it was like, like let's always, change you. Kids were always singing on the, the holidays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can never learn the songs anyway, so why are we singing about the truth? <laughs> but why do we do that, though? Why do we get all dressed up just for Easter, though? Like, I think because it's, what is that about? it's supposed to be a more special service, so you kind yeah. of... Uh, people yeah, it was I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of why people come more on a, yeah. <laughs> on Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. Like, same, with, same with... with uh, Christmas Eve, yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, it's just the re people respect, you know, yeah. for the holiday, for yeah. the resurrection, the birth of Christ, and all that. Yeah, I was visiting a friend of mine. And I was laughing because she was telling me her husband. Uh, she was like, "Yeah, he's not even a good Catholic, but he doesn't eat meat on Friday." <laughs> 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 yeah, they eat. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, he's like he doesn't go to church or nothing, but. For whatever reason, during Lent, he won't eat meat on Friday. Cause okay. Because that's, that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. And, whatever you know, makes you both float. They, they eat uh, fish. And, like I, and I, I, yeah. I think, what, so the point I'll make is more it's a tradition thing. Right? Yeah. You got yeah. it. So you got it. There are some good traditions. Yeah. You put on your yeah. Sunday best yeah. on Easter. Yeah. yeah. Got, got it. Got yeah, it. Because yeah, I think well, like the Catholics, they have their movie. service on sunrise. Oh, sunrise service? Yeah. 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 Welcome to the No Name Podcast, uh, <laughs> Resurrection Sunday edition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, episode 80 something. I don't know. I ain't got my 88? phone. I'll go 88. Yeah, we'll say 88. Resur no, yeah, we'll be 88 because we're on chapter 18. So, yeah. Yeah. It's correct. Yeah. yeah. By the way, we're going to focus on the resurrection on this one. Correct. So re yeah. Episode 88, Resurrection. This is a special edition, just me then. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Special edition. Either way, hit the like and subscribe button, <laughs> share it with others, um, keep passing it along. Um, as you heard, we've been talking about Easter, but, yeah. I, but I think that's the whole point of it is making the memories at church and stuff or wherever you're making the memories. Yeah. I still don't understand. I mean, I guess, I guess for memories, but it's like, you know, you got, I think you were telling me, cause I forgot that they did, they, they were doing that. It's like, they, they lift the curfews and stuff at the parks. So oh people yeah. Can yeah. Go chain their stuff to a dead <laughs> table. So oh wow! Can barbecue for that, one day. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's like wow. Man, I, they don't barbecue one day. They're, they're barbecuing. They're barbecuing the whole three days. Well, they're yeah. probably they're oh, barbecuing wow. the whole three days, but it's literally for really well, yeah, one day. For Sunday. Right? Yeah. Right. It's like it's just interesting that you know that's what's the most important thing is. I need my my spot at the park because our family's been there twenty yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Something like tradition. I yeah. yeah. Go in the they'll cold. Do that. Rainy. They'll stay there. Cause they lift up the they lift up the curfew on Thursday at eleven, and people are already there. Somebody sitting on their spot. Oh wow! Because you can't put nothing until after. Do they have, do they have uh, yeah. pavilions? Yeah, that yeah. you can reserve. They have some you pavilions, but most of all, uh, you know, like the picnic yeah. tables. Yeah. What they do, they'll mark their spot. You know, and and that's their I, area. I, I wonder if you can reserve the pavilions or if it's first yeah. come first serve. And then, uh, uh, typically, you can reserve the yeah, pavilions like when you're so. doing parties and stuff like that uh, in the city. But I wonder if they like don't allow it during yeah. Easter. They I don't probably know. don't. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. but it's they just um, everybody's got to go and get a table. <coughs> so they'll send somebody starting <laughs> even from Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> just uh, there spot, so almost like they, almost like Fiesta. Yeah. I think that yeah. right. People reserve they they yeah. reserve their spots yeah. in Fiesta. Yeah, yeah. but it's like, a, it's more, a, it's more it's more like a reunion for the families. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. 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 it's when all the gatherings and that's of all the, the nice thing about it. And it's all that family, you know. you know, family and friends, and you know. So when I we mean, kids, though, we used to go to Canyon Lake. <laughs> really? Uh -huh. Yeah. 
No, when I was a younger no, kid. No, that's yeah. what I mean. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. All the Vasquez and all that, we would all go yeah. over there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, well, I never went, but. Yeah, for uh, three days. One truck was loaded with all the beer and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well. You know, that for, you know. Uh, yeah. I know I went uh, one time union. to Brackenridge with my sister, but her in-laws were the ones that did that tradition. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know, you want to go and invited uh, me and my siblings to go. And I said, yeah, you know, it was something different, mm. you know, because we really, you know, my parents were not that much of a, the only thing my parent, my mom would do and, and yes, would not eat meat on, on Friday, Friday. but would make the, <laughs> oh, what is it? Bread pudding. And I can't remember what Capirota. it's called. Capirota. <laughs> you know, so that, you know, every, Every mm -hmm. time she'd go ahead and do that. So there's things tradition and tradition. then yeah. And and usually oh. it's to gather the family. I still, I still don't understand the not eating the meat on Friday, so I'm not sure. Because Christ was crucified on Friday. That's why. Okay. And because a symbol of of his body, the meat. Okay. You know, I don't okay. know. Maybe going back to, you know, the mm. the lamb okay, being sacrificed. You know, but they so. eat the lamb. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. know. I know, but the again, Passover, they would eat the lamb. It was it, Catholic tradition, and and uh, and I wasn't that good of a Catholic either. So, but they even, uh, they even would but do I like understood. a promesa. Well, what is that? That's, that's the that's a prom, like you're a, talking about a vow. The, yeah, the land. For forty the days land. you give up uh, like drinking yeah, or land. whatever. Sound like a promise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sound yeah. like a promise and. Yeah. That nah. I didn't find out until later, and but and then now they uh, waited for the left. once it was over. Boy, they start drinking like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I think as a child, me growing up in e as far as Easter goes, like the only thing I can really remember was as a kid, my mother would dress us up, and that would be like the one Sunday we would go to church. Uh, I would see the majority of like my family there, you know, like. Um, we would go like to my grandma's house and we would eat and that would be it man that's all i remember about easter when i was younger and then growing up you know having my kids with them kind of carried the same tradition no easter baskets so oh yeah definitely my oh, mother okay. bought me easter baskets with all kind of junk and candy and oh okay stuff that i know i probably didn't need but you know yeah yeah and i did the same for my kids bought them easter baskets and spent yeah. ridiculous amounts of money for nothing <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I remember family members making it because it was less expensive, and, and now we went and bought them. You know, things, yeah. or they would make it to sell it <laughs> and make a profit. Yeah. So, I mean, like you see, all down the street right now. Yeah, yeah. That's got hey, man, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should do that. We should set us a tent up, and boom, we we're gonna yeah. be all prices in San Antonio. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And all but, the tucked with melted. Yeah. <laughs> They've been sitting there for a while. <laughs> you don't yeah. find yeah. out until you open it up at home. Nah. But I guess, I guess, so moving more to the biblical part of it, I mean, what does the resurrection mean to us? Or I guess I'll start off the question. Maybe you're you're the guest, so what does oh. it actually mean? Well, no, let me, she's not a guest. She's been on our well, show before. Been on the show before, yeah. I mean, she's That's not true. a guest. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. To have been asked to come. Hey. But, uh, you know, I, I have been thinking about it, and mainly, I think, Good Friday with uh, uh, the crucifixion, and, and I was reading. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to get past the crucifixion into the resurrection, mm. you know, because we focus so much on that. And we forget that, you know, there was a resurrection and yeah. that's what we're celebrating. Uh -huh. And usually, I, you know, because the cross is always, you know, in the forefront, you know, the cross, the cross mm -hmm. and repent, repent. And, uh, you know, and we forget that that second part or is it the second part? The resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. That he he's alive. He has risen. He's no longer there. Uh, yeah. And he 
he sits at God's right hand and and um, hearing um, some preachings on it, sermons uh, that he is still in his human form mm-hmm. in heaven, and a reminder of his sacrifice and and that there's someone in human form, the first human form to be in heaven. Yeah. Um, so with the scars of, of the nails in, in his hands and, and, the see again, going back to the crucifixion, but it's where he has risen. risen. Yeah. Yeah. And he's alive. Yeah. I don't know. I think you just can't, you can't, you you can't really forget about the, the, the crucifixion. What, you know what I mean? The resurrection and the crucifixion, they both. Go hand in hand. Yeah, they go together. I yeah. mean, okay. I mean, uh, for me, you know, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, whatever you want to call it. Um, all I honestly really knew about Resurrection Sunday was the death of Christ. That yeah. was it. That was all that I really knew. They all the I never really nobody really focused too much on his actual resurrection. It was always really. On the crucifixion That's what I always remember But now You know Knowing the, the The stuff that I know now The things that I know now Um For me The the resurrection The biggest thing for me Is hope Because when Christ Went to the cross He did it out of A, a lot of things For us A lot of things for us And the most important was He was obedient Even though he didn't want to You know He's like If you take this a don't take this cup away if it's your will, you know, but that's not what God will for him. So he was obedient and he still did it anyway. You know, all of that suffering and, you know, all that. And, you know, as for me in my journey, like I always just always just think like, just like, man, like how could somebody do that? You know, for me, like me, right. of all people like me, you know, just like, it's like, and sometimes I feel like, man, like I'm the one who, Hammering, you know, the nails in his hands sometimes because of, of my actions and my disobedience, you know, my not trusting in God sometimes, you know. And I know these are struggles that we all go through, you know, because we people first. But ultimately, I know that we have to we got to learn how to really have faith and trust in God and trust in the resurrection of Christ as we can be resurrected just like he was resurrected. Right. So that's what I take yeah. from it. Yeah. So, well, from what I understand, yeah. baptism is is yeah. a symbol of resurrection. I got baptized. Believe it or not, I got baptized when I was nine years old. I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't. I just did it because my grandma was like, "Boy, you need to get baptized." I was like, "Okay, grandma." <laughs> so yeah. I went and did it, and everybody was all happy. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And I was just like, "Okay, yeah, nine, bro." And it took me how many, it took me how many, I'm like looking at this like, Lord, I I always think like, Lord, like, like, why, why do I have, why did I have to wait to this point in my life to get to where I'm at? Like, why come I couldn't have been it? Then I say, then like, just now, I just was like, you know, you got baptized when you were nine, so. You had a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you had a long time. Yeah. So that ain't my fault. That's your fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, yeah. that's so I don't know. That's that's my whole thoughts. I was 15, I I believe. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think I was 15 or 16 when I got baptized. Mm. So I kind of understood. But again, you know, it, it was a symbol and... and uh, and I continued going to church and, and mm-hmm. you know, following Christ. But, you know, I think now I understand a little more of what it meant. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, it's, you did it at nine. Yeah. I did it at 15. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. It it's a it journey, is. right? It is. Yeah. It's, I, it, I'm reminded of David when he was anointed king. He was 15. Mm-hmm. But he, it didn't happen until what fifteen years, years later, later? Or 20, yeah. ten something, that he actually became king. Yeah. So you know it, it's you yeah, kinda it's a journey. Go. Yeah, 
you know, and mature, and, and God understands. <laughs> yeah, it takes time to understand the resurrection and stuff. Um, yeah. Like from the whole part. You? Bugs Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I think both are very important. One, because him dying on the cross, shedding his blood, the for, yeah. that was the forgiveness of our sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, res the resurrection was a reminder that he is a God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he resurrected, you know, to remind us that he is the son of God. Yeah. Because a lot of people doubted him, you know. And, and, and you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's always should be, I mean, it shouldn't only be on Easter, really. We should always be reminded what God did in our lives, you know, every Facts. day. You know, how he died, how he suffered and all that. Yeah. You know, and especially in this generation where, you know, people don't want to suffer. They want everything easy, mm -hmm. easy in life. And, and, you know, sometimes things don't come easy, yeah. you know. You know, because if God wanted to, he could have made it easy for his son. Oh, yeah. You know, put him yeah, in the we, we all, uh, Yeah, we all know that. You yeah. know, prepared all his uh, castle and all that, uh -huh. or palace or whatever. But no, he brought him to live as a regular human being, you know, was the son of a carpenter, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and through his life journey, you know, and, and even Jesus, it took 30 years before he really started his ministry. Mm -hmm. And it was about three and a half years that he ministered mm -hmm. until he died, you know, and I believe that, you know, when it was time to die, I think Jesus said, you know what, I'm not done, Lord. Can you give me a couple of more years to minister? But the plan was set. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a lot of us, that's what we don't think. The plan is set. Nothing's always good. We're always going to think that everything's going to turn out fine and fast. But it's, uh, it's on all in God's timing. Mm -hmm. you see? God had a timing for Jesus to die, to suffer and all that. And then God had a timing for him to resurrect, which was on the third day, you know. And uh, you know, and I was reading a scripture. Let me see if I can turn on my. Uh, that happened. Oh, there. Oh, gee. oh, excuse me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 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 on Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse eight. Okay. You know, I, 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 right now I was looking at this. Uh, look, look at it says the angel said to the woman do not be afraid for i know that you are looking for jesus who was crucified you know you know the women uh, were going there because women means plural there wasn't one woman it was mm -hmm. several women you know and the first thing he tells them not to be afraid you know because you know remember that uh, they crucified Jesus not only for being the son of God, but because he was portraying to be a Christian and, you know, uh, teaching another, uh, can't say religion, teaching the, the true word. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like it, you know, so like the disciples, they were all scared, you know. And uh, that, that's something to me that it, it astounds me because Man, they were with Jesus three and a half years, and he always kept reminding him that he had to die. You know, he had to. All the time he was reminding them. You know, but when it came to the nitty gritty, it's, it's not. But then the, that part where it says, for I know that you are looking for Jesus. See? Nowadays, how many people are looking for Jesus? <laughs> Very few. You know, you know, we come to church, we do all the... I guess the religious things, mm -hmm. but doesn't necessarily mean that we're looking for Jesus. See, there's women who are looking for Jesus, you know. And he, and he told them, He's not here, He's resurrected. <laughs> you know. and, and I believe that's, that's the most, uh, to me, that's what uh, the resurrection day is. Easter is reminding us that He died and He res resurrected. Mm. Because Christmas time reminds us of His birth. That he was born Correct. as a human being. Yeah. You know, to, to start his journey as the savior, you know. Because that that was his ministry, that was his vision. That's what God had for him to be a savior of the whole of the whole world. Mm. You know. So it, it all comes hand in hand, you know. So, you know, I believe that the resurrection and the the death and the resurrection go hand in hand. You know, oh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. 
I agree. You can't forget one or the other. You know? Yeah. Even though it looks like we celebrate more the death of Christ. I think, I, but, but that's more. I think that's more now. Like, even as we're studying the book of Acts, which was written a few uh, hundred years or something after the church started. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything they speak about, they touch on his death, but it's always about the resurrection. Yeah. Because when you look at it, the way I see it, and you touched on it a second ago, just a little bit, but um, it's a differentiator. Because if you if you don't have the resurrection, you just have someone that dies on the cross. Right. And there was plenty of of, of people who claimed to be the Messiah that had died. Like yeah. even in Acts, when we were studying in the beginning, they yeah. mentioned of one that was actually near Nazareth, Judas of Nazareth, I believe it was called Judas of Galilee, somewhere around there. That was crucified um, as well, who had followers who believed he was the Messiah. So it wasn't like you wouldn't have had the first uh, person claiming to be a Messiah being crucified or dying or being a martyr. So the mm. differentiator was the resurrection because up until that point, I mean, even as we talk about yeah. it, that's really what differentiates Christianity from the Jewish religion. Like a lot of times we separate ourselves from the Jewish religion, but if you study all of Acts as we're studying it, it's just the Jewish religion mm-hmm. enhanced. It's the Jewish religion with the Messiah involved. Like Jesus, even up until his death, was talking about him being the fulfillment of the law, him, you know, bringing clarity to what the law was. Yeah. He never came and wiped out the Jewish religion. No. no. All he did was add on to it. Yeah. So the only thing that differentiates us from them is the resurrection yeah yeah and that's changes everything because his death now looking back once you have the resurrection now you look back and say okay then he did die for our sins yeah because if he didn't raise the dead yeah a lot of people die for people or say they die for people but they ain't get rise they didn't rise from the dead either right the rising from the dead was the confirmation that he was who he right. is right. and mm-hmm. that validated his the death Christ. Yeah. Right. now from a spiritual right. standpoint if he never rose from the dead his sacrifice was was done. We just wouldn't have confirmation of it, right? You know, and so I think when you look at it, to me, that's that's the big differentiation on it. Like, um, if you go back to all that God did in the Old Testament, the only reason God can say the things He can say without being a liar is because of what happens at the cross. Yeah. You see, and because he's not involved in time and space, he's mm-hmm. able to say those things. But it's only because he knows that's going on that he's able to go back. You know. Um, well, that's the thing that it's the Old Testament, which is the Old Covenant, and the New Testament, which is actually the New Covenant. That's what differs from. I think it's a new. Well, I, I, I think when you look at that, that's from the Abrahamic and the Messiah point yeah. of view, and I, I do think there's a new covenant there. But I also start well, because, thinking there's a fulfillment of a covenant because yeah. the thing is, like God's covenant. If you go back to the Garden of Eden, the very first thing that He says when they sin and they're thrown out is that He was going to put uh, atmosphere or whatever between. You know the devil and and man. Remember that one day that he would bite at the heels, mm-hmm. but one day, you know, one would be born that would crush his head. Yeah. And again, that's the prophecy of Christ. Right. So it goes all the way back to that point. So if God's able to say that and He's all knowing and He doesn't lie, then mm-hmm. He's able to do fulfill that. I I don't know. For me, one of the things, and luckily this will be released after I preach on Sunday, because one of the things I've been looking at (laughs) is one of the things that God says consistently throughout the Bible is that he'll never leave us or forsake us. You know, in one version or another, that he's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. But the only way God can do that, even in the Old Testament until now, is because he knew Christ was going to die on the cross. Yeah. Because the moment Christ took that sin on the cross, what would, what did what was his last words? Why have you forsaken? Why have you forsaken me? Yeah. One had to be forsaken for all of us not to be forsaken. Because if God is who He is, He should never be able to listen to us, see us, or hear us because of the sin we carry. But because Jesus, Jesus was Christ. willing to be forsaken, right? Yeah, we are able yeah, to be to unforsaken, right? Right. And and, yeah, I and, and and I think that's where you see the differentiation of it all. 
And God knew that. That's why God was able to put up with the Noah generation. Why he was able to put up with the Moses generation and, and, and all these things where people denied him. And even now, you know, mm -hmm. we openly mock him, deny him. We, you know, kind of like you were talking about, like, you know, you feel like sometimes your sins are being put on there. But the reason he can listen to our prayers and forgive us and all these things is because someone already paid the price. Now, it sounds weird because, again, Christ for us happened at a certain time and point. Mm -hmm. But for God, there is no time and point. Right. Everything's eternal. So he knew Christ was going to do that from the get go. Yeah. Hence why he was able to go to Cain and talk to Cain, even though Cain was full of sin. Right. He was able to, which I, I think like, that's why you see like even Moses, right. Or why he was able to speak to Moses, which I, you know, they just released that Netflix. Testament of Moses. Testament documentary or whatever. Which shouldn't be the foundation of your knowledge of Moses. Right. It should be an add-on. Oh, yeah, because right. a lot is. <laughs> it's just <laughs> but, entertainment. Yeah. But it's good. It, it does tie in a lot yeah. of history, and it does yeah. tie in a lot of things to it. And I think, but you but you see, sometimes we forget how flawed they were as men or mm -hmm. women yeah. in the Bible. And you see, you know, Moses did struggle with anger issues. I mean, you see it yeah. throughout the Bible. I mean, that's why God, he didn't get to go into the prom, which yeah. is, is something that has always struck me that yeah. he was not mm -hmm. able because of what he did. Yeah. You know, one of his actions. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I think. But I love so, to see. So because of that, you see that, you know, he was able to see God or be there with God, whichever the argument is. Mm -hmm. And he was able to be there. But why? I, I My opinion, why he was able to have that communion with God and that conversation with God all goes back to Christ. Like, because God knew he was going to be forgiven. Mm. Because in essence, God shouldn't have been able to talk to Moses because Moses murdered a man. Yeah. Right. And so with that sin, he should have never done it. But he did. And, and I think, again, it goes back to, because, again, the blood of Christ goes past time and space. Like, it's not, okay, he died here. Now, every now sin going forward is forgiven. Yeah, it was right. all it of was the all, yeah. sins forgiven. Right. And so I think that's what makes it such a differentiator, because if not, then we're really just a Jewish religion. Like, we would just be practicing Jews if we didn't have that differentiation of, well, of who I Christ mean, is. I mean, there's yeah. a term that I hear lately, Jew, uh uh, Judaism, Judaism, but uh, Christian, Judeo Christian, uh, Ju Judaism. Yeah, it, it was getting, well, that's <laughs> getting that, there. That, that was Judeo Christian. That was, a, that was an old term. Yeah. Yeah. Around. No, but it yeah. kind of brings both of them, and yeah. and you hear it a lot. I mean, I watch the news too too much, but you know, Judeo Christian, and uh, and because you know the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I find interesting because, I mean, you guys all made the point, and it's true. Like, I think a lot of times now we focus on the cross a lot. You see the cross everywhere. People wear it, get it yeah. tattooed on them. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case yeah. may be, there's shirts everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you go back to what we've been reading in Acts and, and you read the letters, yeah. the cross is not so much mentioned. Mm -mm. No. But every time they're the talking about it, it's mm -hmm. always the resurrection. Yep. Like, yeah. yeah. Stephen yep. talks about the resurrection. Yeah. Paul consistently, consistently talks about it. Yep. Talking about yeah. the resurrection. And I think we, as Christians, we tend to, like I was just saying earlier, you know, uh, the, which, yes, but the resurrection, we don't put out front, except for, you know, well, and, and, Easter and, Sunday and, and yeah. or and, and Resurrection again, Sunday. I think that's what made, I think, again, that's what made it so different was that in their times they knew of martyrs i think what made it too di what made it different was one christ was like the resurrection again was a confirmation that he was what you guys were kind of saying a, a, a god in man form like he was full man full god mm -hmm. at the same time not have and have full of both mm -hmm. yeah. and he was able to rise from the dead versus everyone else because like even the scripture like you were reading it was um they're looking for him at the tomb they're still looking for a body they're going to go mourn mm -hmm. yeah and they are. what they find is an empty tomb and and an angel there to and, announce it and part of it the fear part is i mean because i think in the other versions you see 
you know, uh, maybe it's Mary or somebody that goes and they're like, what did you do with the body? Like, it never oh, yeah. their thought process is it that yeah. right. he resurrected. Yeah, that he, yeah they, right. they, had, they, they stole it. They went ahead. Right. They had to be led to there. And yeah. I think once you get to that point, so that's that's what makes it so much different because even well, it, between it, the it, Jewish sects, you had... You had arguments of some that believed in the resurrection, some that didn't, because Jesus addresses that with oh, them yeah. when he's yeah. still alive. Yeah. So, I, I think you see that differentiation from from them, um, and that's why I think Paul and them. That's why they preach so much of the resurrection. Um, yeah, and that, and that was the biggest. Yeah, that was the yeah, biggest yeah, argument he in, in and he resurrected. Yeah, wasn't that like that was yeah. like the biggest argument in the Book of Acts? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, Paul he's going preaching, telling people about the resurrection of Christ, and yeah, that he was and, the Christ, that yeah. he was the Messiah, yeah. and he died yeah. and resurrected. Yeah. And the first part is what he struggles to convince everyone that he was yeah. the Messiah, the Christ, and then the second part, you know, he resurrected. Yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah, you yeah. know, so that's something that was that. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I mean, you know, it's even now I find, you know, and it's become even more real to me now. Christ resurrected. He went up to, and gave us the helper. But, you know, we think that the helper and God are outside our body. Okay. He's, instead of actually realizing that he dwells within us, yeah. you know, uh, and and yeah. I mean because I, I, I could mean, believe that I could believe there, that because, for sure. Yeah, because it, that kind of we forget we're the temple. Yeah, because you know, uh, uh, brother Brian he preached last Sunday and he said something that that kind of stuck with me a little bit. He said, you know, we we're just meant to manage our lives, manage our lives. Our lives are not. We didn't create ourselves. Yeah. Did we? We didn't. We didn't create ourselves. No, God created us for a reason, for a purpose. So we need to do His will, and whatever His will is, is you know, just do that. You know, we and you got to be able to learn how to manage it, and we manage it with the help, like you said, of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, I believe that the Holy Spirit is within us. Yeah, and it, I know oh, and that's the yeah. thing that it, He lives within us, within yeah. this body right now. Yeah. He lives within. He's not next to me. No. You know, he's actually inside yeah. of me. Yeah. And and uh, because the Holy Spirit is like uh, like Pop Dukes always say, he's like that's like your uh, alarm clock or what you call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like right. That's alarm like clock. let you know like hey, some you something ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the alarm yeah. clock is but, outside, and so everyone thinks okay, he's <laughs> outside. <laughs> but you know, uh, technically he lives inside, yeah. but he roams too. Yeah. You know. Because that's what the Bible says. He's a spirit. Yeah. You know, he, he's able to move everywhere. That's why Jesus said, it's necessary for me to die so the Holy the spirit, spirit can be come. Yeah. Upon you helper. Know, yeah. A helper to comfort. He'll do more than what he could do because Jesus took a, a body form. Mm -hmm. A human form. He couldn't be everywhere while he was in a body form. You know. So, yeah, I mean, we, we got to believe that he lives yeah. in us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like... You know, church service or something going on. God is the one that starts moving. You know, the Holy Spirit. You know, because He's where two or three gather in His name. I will be there with you. <coughs> you know, so He's there with us. You know, and, and you know, but uh, the, the hardest thing for a Christian is to believe that Christ is in them. Mm. You know, uh, we pray, Lord, I want to be closer to you. I want to be. How, how much closer can you be if he's already living in you? you yeah. For forgiveness. Now, the the part is like uh, the, what you were saying about Brian about managing. Now you have to have a relationship with him. Yeah. So the spirit can grow in you. Correct. You know, and it it, it can, uh, you know, because from the beginning of time when Adam and Eve sinned, Christ did the God did the first sacrifice, and after that he had told them. Or the atonement of sin, you guys have to, you, you have to be sacrificed. But all that was looking to, uh, to the future, to the cross. See, when Christ was going to die, he was going to be the last sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like now we all look to, to the past where Christ died. We don't have to sacrifice no more. Could you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. Could yeah. you imagine that? You had to, we had to, yeah. We'd have to sacrifice something. 
Man, like, boy. Like, don't tell people the bigger the animal, Dude. the bigger the sin. <laughs> you know, now it's a good thing that nobody knows what your <laughs> sin is because you know, all you have to do is ask Christ to forgive you. You know, and, and uh, you know, but like I said again, I mean, it's, it's good that we're, we celebrate this day tomorrow. But, you know, we come and think about Christ. Yeah. And, and what he did for us, resurrected. Mm -hmm. Because he hadn't resurrected. You yeah. Know, Forget it, bro. You know. And uh, yeah, forget it, man. You know, the, but that should be an everyday thing. Of course. That Christ died and resurrected. Mm -hmm. Should always remind us, you know. Uh, you know well, I'm kind of reminded because also, you know, the Jewish traditions of Passover. It's not just one day. It's either uh, a whole week or a month that they go ahead and, and do the it's like, it's like a week, right? I can't remember I exactly so. the sure. the length of yeah. the time, but they take that time to go ahead and remember uh, them coming out of Egypt, the Ten Commandments, and mm -hmm. they go through the history of of it. And the Passover is uh, something that they go ahead mm -hmm. traditionally. So uh, to me, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, um, I think it should. It has to be tradition. We have to remember. We have to go ahead and share with others the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God. You know that He did uh, not mm -hmm. just die, but also lives now, as the Bible says. You know, to be a mediator, an intercessor for us, to be able to go ahead and, and uh, say, "I shed my blood for them, and I live now here." Uh, because the Bible also says where uh, where He is, that's where we're at. So as as uh, Christians, our belief is okay. There was one illustration that uh, um, I heard, and it's about running the race. And they say you see <coughs> when when they're getting to the finish line that they always extend their head, and the head is what goes ahead and and uh mm -hmm. goes over the line and 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 they've won and he says christ he, he's the head so he finished and the body follows mm. i thought that's that a was good amazing. illustration yeah, yeah that's a real good illustration it wasn't mine like i said i heard it on that's on good the well thank you for like, sharing that that, was, that good. was something you know so i thought it was uh you know so christ you know has resurrected and the body is coming yeah Behind, you know, <laughs> I'll tie it in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stretch, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love the charismatic. Um, yes, I I was born charismatic. Okay, I say, when I was, I was, I just like the and, charismatic and I, illustrations. Dude. I know, dude, I know. Dude. I was I was born in fire. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, <laughs> Nothing I, at I all. Do, Nothing you know, wrong with that. And believe me, when I was way younger and teaching i was not very charismatic it's very monotone very low-key because i was you know but now as i have grown older and you're getting refined yeah i uh yeah that charismatic root <laughs> but I think, comes the, out. I think the most important thing is like you guys were all saying is really just remembering it but not just on easter or resurrection sunday but I mean, if it's the differentiation, if it's the foundation of our faith and, and where it all comes back. And this is, like, at the end of the day, the whole point of his death is not just yeah. forgiving our sins and his whole point of resurrection is not just the confirmation, but this whole thing was supposed to be a sign of God's love and tying us oh, back. Oh, yes. So it should be something that we remember consistently and something that we should cherish on a consistent basis. Yeah, I yeah, agree. But um, as I agree. humans, God knew. That's why he always had these, you know, uh, the Sabbath day. Uh, this is a, a feast that you will go ahead and, and traditionally, because he knew our hum, human part was, I know, but that's okay. What, but that's what I mean. That's focus. why, but that's why so, we need to remember it more than just one day. And, oh, yeah. And, and have it there, because, again, as human beings, we do forget as time goes by. Yeah. And that's why it was important for them to keep the Passover, keep these ceremonies and stuff like that. It wasn't um, just to have a celebration. It was 
they were being reminded of what they were brought out of. Yeah. yeah. And I think the same thing has to go with the resurrection and stuff. But what I'm saying is, I think it, it's important, like you guys were saying earlier, that we remember it consistently, not just one one day out of the year, but that we're consistently remembering what Christ is doing no, yeah. us and what it all comes down to. Because it all comes down to the cross. It comes mm-hmm. down to the cross and the resurrection. Like the, the I mean... We, we all love to quote John 3.16 as the core scripture, but the, that core scripture ties into the cross and everything because you, you need a father willing to give up his son, and then you need a son willing well, to, to give up correct. his life. Yeah. You know, Jesus said himself, no greater love than, than a man giving up his life for another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so see, and that you, goes all you, the way back to Abraham you, and Isaac. But you had to... But you had to go, you had to go again to, I mean, I think it goes further back than that, but. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's what's prominent to most people. But what what I'm trying to say is you got to remember this consistently because it's a foundational thing. It's not just a once a year thing. Oh, I know that. But the thing is that if we're Christians, I I believe that to be true. But for the non-Christian, the ones that are still out there and okay they become okay you know because it's in the forefront of what christ did in his resurrection yeah. it's there and it's mainly yeah. for uh, you know uh, not yeah. just for us but for them that. i would uh, i mean if you're not a christian it's what paul says that it is it's foolish to you yeah. you're not a christian if you don't believe it it's foolish to believe uh God sent his son to die on the cross. Oh, and I and so I understand that. So there's nothing in the forefront but, at that point. Yeah, but I I get that. But the thing is that it's everywhere. But there's yeah. a, not really. Yeah, but take money well, everywhere. but there's religions that <laughs> really, really there's religions that for one day they think about the resurrection and the yeah yeah and, yeah, the, and, and, the, and, yeah. The point I'm driving at is that and the death, you know. The point I'm driving at is that we should be remembering this right every day because it's yeah. it's because yeah, that's and what I agree because it's like what Jesus talked about. With the communion, it's something that we should be doing consistently. Every yes. time you do it, is to remember Him. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's that's what we have to remember with the resurrection and the thing. It's a foundational mm-hmm. thing, um, so that we're consistently remembering it. And I think as you consistently remember it, then you become grateful. And when you become grateful, that's when the relationship starts happening more yeah. with God. Because it's not He did this once and went right. away. This is something that He's. It's, it's a it's a lifetime. Yeah, it's a, it's a symbol yeah. of his love. And so when you start looking at it yeah. as a symbol of his love, there's nothing but gratitude that comes yeah. out. And so you're in this consistent relationship with God on it, and yeah. you start seeing it in different areas and, and how he does it. So, um, but yeah, I, th- I think it like um, you should continue to remember it, continue to practice what you can in it, um, and uh, celebrate both his death and his resurrection. Yes, I agree. Yep. That's it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah.